The Bentayga is only the fourth completely new design to be produced by Bentley since Volkswagen took ownership of the company in 1998, but it's certainly the most significant. The car takes the brand into previously uncharted territory and can allow owners the same capability should they wish to stretch its limits. It is, quite simply, one of the world's most complete and compelling luxury products. Just how fast and luxurious can an SUV get? Well, we're about to find out with just about every exclusive brand you can think of piling into the top segment of this market. This, though, is the car that all comers in this sector have to beat, the Bentley Bentayga. It's a model the company spent years deliberating over, and you can see why. The issue of whether Bentley should be building an SUV at all didn't delay decision makers at parent group Volkswagen for too long. Uh, with sister brand Porsche's KN, they'd already seen just how much profit a model of this kind could generate. A bigger problem lay in delivering to the kind of demanding brief the mark knew would be required from a Bentley contender in this class. Uh, the car in question would have to be one of the fastest SUVs of its kind ever made, yet also one of the most satisfying to drive. At the same time, it would need to be able to scale mountains like a Range Rover and also to provide the exterior exclusivity and interior opulence of a Malzahn. It would, in short, need to fulfill a broader remit than that of any other car in the world. Which is why so much care has gone into the creation of this model. There was certainly plenty of potential for a general dilution of brand values here, given that it was necessary for the Bentayga to share much of its engineering with other Volkswagen Group premium SUVs like the Porsche Cayenne, the Audi Q7 and the Lamborghini Urus. Now that is something that this model's more exclusively platformed rival from Rolls-Royce seeks to capitalise on. Yet, the crew maker insists that this car is, in every way that really matters, a proper Bentley, as it'll need to be to justify the exalted prices being asked. Now that hasn't deterred potential customers who've been clamouring for the car ever since its original launch in 2016. First with 6 litre W12 petrol power and then also with the 4 litre V8 diesel unit we're going to try here. An engine powerful enough to make this the world's fastest diesel fueled SUV. Either way, you can see the attraction of what's on offer here. After all, if you're fabulously wealthy and you don't want to be either constantly photographed driving a supercar or be mistaken for an airport limousine driver, just what else do you buy? One of these? Time to put this car to the test. Just how do you go about creating a car like this? Make a huge, prestigious SUV sporty and usually it can't be properly capable off-road. Yet the Bentayga had to be both, offering limousine luxury even when lapping a racetrack at up to 187 miles an hour, while using the same suspension that must be unbelievably tough inching over rocks in the desert at a three miles an hour crawl. It's all very well to question the need for cars of this sort, but you can't deny that they stretch the limits of what we previously thought was even possible. Including, perhaps, the desire of the moneyed aristocracy to venture away from the beaten track. Does one really do off-road, they might wonder. Well, one does now. In a Bentayga, you along on request with a fine Linley China crockery dinner service and a drinks cooler with a bottle of Bollinger and a pair of crystal champagne flutes can tackle the outback in more exquisite comfort than was ever possible before with a mountain marquetry veneered piece of artwork hung on the dash and a diamond studded solid gold Breitling cock reminding you to be back in time for tea. Such is the life of the SUVIP. But is there any relevance here for the rest of us? Well, possibly. If you run a more affordable premium SUV, but you've often thought that its diesel engine should be quieter and that its handling at speed around corners could be just a bit more car-like, then you're absolutely right. All of this is possible. The Bentayga proves it. For goodness sake, if a 2.5-tonne gentleman's club on wheels can tackle tarmac turns under power in this kind of fashion, then your SUV and mine uh, really ought to be cruising through the corners with a good deal more decorum. 
Back in the 1920s, Ettore Bugatti's favourite way of describing a Bentley was as the world's fastest truck. Well, if you were to be equally disparaging, you might now say that that is exactly what this now is. Or at least that's what it was originally intended to be. Now, since then, Bentayga's initial launch, other super high performance, large luxury SUVs have also arrived to lay claim to that title, most notably the Range Rover Sport SVR and the Lamborghini Urus. Both of those cars, though, are more overt in their high speed pretensions. In this Bentley, virtually the uh, same reserves of speed are instead wrapped up in a thick silken blanket of refinement that's entirely appropriate to the progress of the model from this classic brand. Yes, and that's even if you have a diesel fitted. Uh, that's the engine that we've chosen to test here as an alternative to the 6 litre W12 petrol unit that the majority of Bentayga buyers still insist on choosing. A 550 PS twin turbo 4 litre petrol V8 is also available. Black pump fueled motoring is another concept previously foreign to cars from crew, so the company has sugared its introduction here with plenty of technology. Now that comes courtesy of the triple charged format that we were first introduced to when the uh, 435 PS 4 litre V8 diesel unit that we're trying here made its initial debut in the Audi SQ7 using an electrically driven e-compressor supercharger in addition to the usual pair of turbos. Now this sophisticated setup irons out any trace of turbo lag as you accelerate through the 8-speed automatic transmission, leaving just a seamless charge of pulling power that simply hurls this enormous conveyance at the horizon. 62 miles an hour is dispatched in 4.8 seconds en route to 168 mph. No other production diesel model in the world is faster or more capable. The 900 Nm torque figure being the same as that quoted for the much larger capacity petrol variant and it's enough to facilitate a 3.5 tonne towing figure and that equals that of the market's most capable pickup trucks. Having said that though, uh, if you can afford a Bentayga, then your boat is probably too big to tow. On paper, the 6-litre W12 petrol model, which is available in standard 608 PS or in uprated speed guise, is even faster, the mainstream version improving the performance stats to 4 seconds and 187 miles an hour, and getting as standard a crucial drive system that's optional on this diesel derivative, Bentley Dynamic Ride Control. To better manage cornering, a lesser luxury SUV would merely give you adaptive damping, the kind of setup that stiffens the dampers through the turns, unsettling ride quality in the process. Uh, the sheer speed and physics involved in controlling something as large and fast as this, though, requires a more advanced engineering solution than that, uh, which Dynamic Ride Control delivers with an active anti-roll bar setup. Here, electric actuators act to either loosen or stiffen the anti-roll bars depending on the way you're driving. So they're slack and loose when you're in a straight line to allow lots of wheel deflection, uh, while on a corner they quickly stiffen to reduce body roll. As you expect, the system's connected up to the various provided driving modes that you can access via this rotary dial down here by the gear stick. Uh, there are various options intended for paved tarmac use, all of which make the usual tweaks to the steering feel, the ride quality and the gear change timings. Uh, you'll find the usual comfort and sport settings and a custom option that allows you to choose your own parameters. Plus, there's a further Bentley mode that sets everything up as the engineers would recommend. Either way, composure is impressive, providing that dynamic ride control has been specified, and that setup works seamlessly with uh, torque vectoring and stability control systems to make sure that the car never strays too far from its line or becomes unstable. Without ever doing anything as imposing as engaging you with the act of driving too much, the rather aloof feel of the steering discourages that, which is exactly what most likely owners will want. Another key factor in the way that dips, crests and undulations are simply massaged away in this car is the standard air suspension which, as usual with these kinds of systems, is adept at lowering itself not only to make getting in and out of the car easier but also for greater cruising speed stability. 
It can raise itself too, of course, pushing the standard 206 millimeter ride height up to as much as 247 millimeters. That in turn opens up the possibility of a great deal of extra off-road capability. That's the kind of thing that we suggested at the beginning a proportion of likely Bentayga owners might be persuaded to want. Certainly more capability has been built in here for that than they will ever need, particularly if the optional all-terrain specification pack that we've been trying here has been specified. As well as additional underbody armour and a top view surround camera system, this provides four further modes for that rotary controller we mentioned earlier, snow and grass, dirt and gravel, uh, mud and trail and sand. You'll need these if you want to put to the test the quoted 25 degree approach and departure angles with each drive setting featuring throttle, brake, gearbox and suspension inputs tailored to suit the conditions. As you cruise through the wilds with uh, Mozart on your stereo, uh, the all-terrain info screen option that you can select on the center dash display uh, will allow you to monitor all of this along with the current state of vehicle pitch, uh, the steering angle, the wheel articulation, uh, the vehicle roll and the suspension ride height uh, plus there's also a compass and an altimeter. If this was merely a conventionally large luxurious SUV you'd start to question the point of all this given that of course a typical Bentayga will spend its life negotiating the hazards of the suburbs rather than the Serengeti but as we've been saying all the way through this is not a conventional large luxury SUV which is exactly why a potential buyers likely to want one might be mildly amused by the thought of breakfasting on Ben Nevis or snacking on Snowdonia. Most of the time though, they will simply enjoy the way that this genteel conveyance can transport them into another rarefied world far removed from that attainable by most ordinary SUVs. However pretentious, it's the Bentley way. Not everyone likes the look of this car, but there does seem to be agreement on one important point, that it looks like a Bentley. Now, just as Porsche did with its original KN SUV, the crew maker has struggled to translate its styling demeanor into a car of this kind uh, with an aesthetically divisive end result. Still, the shape certainly has the street side presence that many likely buyers will want. At least what we've got is a great deal sleeker than the ugly concept car that inspired it, the EXP 9F, which was shown at the 2012 Geneva Motor Show, but fortunately, which has been refined a great deal into the finished Bentayga product. The next issue to get over here is the one of shared part parentage. After all, if you throw Ferrari money at one of these, you'll need to have a ready argument of justification in the face of detractors who will tell you that you've bought an Audi Q7 with a badge and you've paid three times as much for the privilege. Now, Bentley responds to these people by telling them that every version of this car is handcrafted in crew, which doesn't quite tell the whole story. Actually, every Bentayga does in fact start its life in the same way as a Q7, on the same Bratislava Slovakian production line that also builds its Volkswagen Group luxury SUV cousins. So not only that Audi, but also the Volkswagen Touareg, the Porsche Cayenne, and the Lamborghini Urus. But that plant only builds a skeletal body in white structure that sits on the MLB Evo platform all those models share. Having constructed this, embryo Bentayga models are then shipped to Bentley Motors and crew, at which point they start to acquire all the values that are intrinsic to this legendary luxury brand. Now we talked about street side presence, some of that is down to sheer size. If you think a standard five meter long Range Rover is a substantial thing, you might join slow lane dawdlers in finding this 5.14 meter long Bentley quite intimidating. Certainly quite a lot lengthier than its Volkswagen Group cousins, wider too, more than 2.2 meters from mirror to mirror. Big enough then to be very grand and surprisingly dynamic. This unusual crease across the rear door, part of the uh, largest single piece aluminium pressing in the automotive world, is there to emphasize power packed rear haunches that combine with a sweeping roof line to emphasize this Bentayga's performance pretensions, as do the huge stylized wheels that can be between 20 and 22 inches in size. Uh, we've got the 21 inches here. They feel enormous arches that are separated by this neat chrome strip, while further up there's more chrome around the glass house and on this lovely Bentley fender vent behind the front wheel arch. 
You might find it less easy to love the front end, but it's certainly imposing. Naturally, the large chrome frame grille with its diamond pattern mesh is topped by the Bentley badge, and in the case of the Bentayga, gets flanked by four distinctive floating all LED headlamps. Lower down are the imposing corner air intakes and the lower skid plate that you'd expect from a modern large SUV. At the back, the styling is considerably more restrained than it is at the front. Uh, the LED lamp clusters are similar to those used on other models in the Bentley lineup, although in this case they illuminate with a more distinctive B-shaped graphic. Not so nice is the way that the wiper is mounted at the base of the screen, which looks a bit untidy compared to the way uh, a Range Rover tucks its blade under the roof spoiler. On the plus side, uh, the reversing lamp has been very neatly blended into the line beneath the lower panel and the protection underbody section. That's just above a potent set of exhausts that brand loyalists will use to differentiate the engine you've chosen. This diesel variant features these twin quad pipes rather than the large oval outlets of the alternative petrol W12. Enough on the outside, let's get to the part of the car that will probably really sell it to you. Now, you may have had reservations about the looks of a Bentayga, or if you're a journalist, you may have been obsessing about the fact that it shares a few substructures with humbler Audi and Volkswagen models, but all of those issues simply vanish away the moment that the enormous door heaves shut behind you like a bank vault. Almost everything here feels pleasurably different to anything you'll have experienced in any previous car from the brand. And that starts, of course, with the way that you're seated. Now, no matter how much you've prepared yourself for the idea of a Bentley SUV, it's still a novel experience to find yourself gazing at the famous brand badge from such a high and commanding seating position. And although you, of course, expect the cabin to be luxuriously finished, it's still surprising to find the sheer lengths the company's gone to in terms of substance, sophistication and craftsmanship. I mean, it's to a level unsurpassed, even by one of the company's Malzahn models, costing nearly twice as much. In every way that really matters, this is easily the most luxurious Bentley interior we've ever tried, with sumptuous materials and intricate detailing everywhere you look. The dashboard takes the iconic Bentley wing design as its inspiration, and it's embellished with various jewel-like polished elements. Uh, highlights including this beautifully crafted gear knob with its knurled finish. Uh, the center bullseye vents with their lovely organ pull controls and a classic company clock at the top of the center stack there. The stitched leather is exquisite too, particularly with the uh, optionally quilted finishes that feature here as part of the Mulliner driving space specification pack. And all of it's surrounded by a selection of handcrafted veneers in 15 pieces, each shaped by artisans in the crew factory from a choice of seven different veneer options. Uh, we've got liquid amber here. <laughs> Ever wondered why a Bentley was more expensive than most of its premium rivals? Well, here's your answer. Uh, not everything's perfect, of course. You reach down below the gear stick for the infotainment system rotary dial that you'd expect to find, not a premium model of this sort, and you find yourself grasping the drive controller instead. Now, it turns out that the center dash display has to be managed by jabbing away at its touchscreen functionality, unless you're prepared to try to master the intricacies of voice control. At eight inches in size, uh, this monitor isn't particularly large by premium class standards either. Still, it does manage all the audio, uh, navigational and informational functions well enough, uh, with most of that content also available for display in the configurable centre panel that lies between the two main dials in the instrument binnacle. Uh, you can transform this area into a navigation map if you want to, or use it to view trip data, uh, audio, phone or driving settings. Now, if you specify your Bentayga with a head-up display, of course, you won't have to look at any of this very much. What else? Uh, seats have always been a handcrafted Bentley speciality, and these ones really are sumptuous, featuring 22-way power adjustment, heating, and in this case, ventilation, and a six-program massaging system. Uh, a word for the optional name for Bentley, 18-speaker, 1950-watt audio system too. If there's a better in-car hi-fi setup currently available in any car in the world, we haven't yet heard it. 
but have the designers nailed the practical stuff too? Well, mainly yes. Um, we would like to have seen larger door pockets and also an overhead sunglasses compartment, but otherwise uh, cabin storage provision is pretty complete. Uh, there's a large shallow area at the bottom of the center stack here, and that's complemented by a further lidded bin between the seats here, uh, and that is complete with uh, twin USBs, an aux in point, and a 12 volt socket. In addition, there's also a small cubby below the drive controller. There are two cup holders here by the gear stick, and there's also a reasonably sized glove box, which is a little bit compromised actually by the need for uh, media system storage. Of course, it may be that you're one of those Bentayga owners who isn't too interested in sitting at the front, in which case an equally special experience at the rear awaits. You can certainly see why someone might prefer to be chauffeur around in this Bentley, and if that's the case, you'll have ordered this car in its four seat configuration. Now with that, you lose this rear bench and you instead gain two 18-way adjustable reclining rear chairs with foot rests that are separated by a wood and leather trimmed console that can incorporate a drinks cooler. As you can see, we haven't got any of that here. Uh, that setup stops you from being able to fold down the back seats, so we wouldn't be able to show you the boot space. Uh, but even with this conventional rear seating arrangement in place, I mean, it all feels very luxurious indeed. Uh, there's plenty of room to stretch out and just as much uh, luxury and craftsmanship as you'll find up front. Uh, the quilted door cards, the organ stop vents, it's all here too. These optional veneered picnic tables look especially classy. The light, airy feel helps too, and that's provided courtesy of a standard Bentayga feature. This huge panoramic glass roof, which is split into a couple of panes and makes up nearly 60% of the total surface of the top of the car. They may also have noticed these two extra seat mounted screens that come as part of the Bentley rear entertainment setup. Actually, they're not screens, but individual Android tablets, and they're removable for handheld use, and they incorporate 4G, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth connectivity. Even without these, there's plenty of rear seat infotainment access courtesy of this little infotainment screen uh, down uh, by the transmission tunnel. That not only allows you to alter seat settings and the cabin climate, but also allows you to check on the selected audio mode and all kinds of current vehicle data. There's even an analog speedometer so your kids can pipe up when you're driving too fast. Uh, now, talking of kids, if you've got a few of them, then you'll be interested in the optional activity specification pack, which adds two further boot-mounted seats. That's something not available from any other super luxury SUV in this segment. Let's finish with a look at the boot. Uh, now, there's a power tailgate, as you'd expect, although unfortunately you have to pay extra to get that fitted out with uh, remote functionality that will allow you to open it with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper. Now, you don't get a split tailgate as you do in a Range Rover, but uh, Bentley is keeping the Gymkhana sets happy by offering an optional event seat that pulls out for you to rest your jobbers on. Now, the sheer size of this car suggests that it'll have an enormous boot, but not a bit of it. In fact, the 484 litre capacity is less than you get in a small hatchback based SUV like a BMW X1. That's pretty poor given this Bentley is the best part of a metre longer than a car like that. Uh, the cargo bay's restricted size has even more of an impact if you go for one of the alternative seating layouts I mentioned earlier. Uh, with the four seat setup in place, the luggage space falls to uh, 431 litres, while if you add in the two extra boot mounted chairs of the optional activity specification pack, you'll have only 215 litres of room to cram in shopping bags behind them. On the plus side, the seat back is split 40-20-40, allowing you to carry really long items like skis without disturbing a couple of rear seated folk. And as part of the air suspension system, uh, there's this useful little button on the left-hand cargo wall that allows you to drop the loading height down to make getting heavier items in and out that bit easier. Nearby is a useful netted area for taking smaller items too. Now though you can pay extra for these luggage management kit floor rails and subdivide the boot area 
if you want to. There's no provision for an adjustable height boot for that would enable you to carry uh, taller items more easily. Perhaps that's because there's so little space beneath the boot floor. Now, with or without the upgraded name stereo system fitting, there's certainly no room down here for the kind of full-size spare wheel that you think every truly capable large SUV ought to have. Perhaps most annoying of all is that Bentley hasn't thought it necessary to include the standard provision of cargo sidewall seat retraction latches. Now, because those don't feature on the seat shoulders either, if you want to flatten the rear bench, you have to come around to the side of the car and pull up catches on the sides of the seat bases. And when the backs do retract, they don't fold completely flat, but they do free up 1,774 litres of total space. Bentley describes the Bentayga as the fastest, most powerful, most luxurious and most exclusive SUV in the world. That's quite a claim and it's backed up by prices to match. Just to park one on your driveway will cost them around £136,000 for the diesel and that's before you've added a single option or extra. If you want the extra power of the petrol fuel W12 variant, your starting point will be around £163,000. As you'd expect, the 4-litre petrol V8 version is priced between these two units. Now these prices assume you stick with a standard 5-seat interior layout. There are two other seat layout options. Uh, a 7-seat package for around £2,500 more gives you an extra couple of chairs in the boot area. Or you could go the other way and choose a version with seating for four, which for around £9,000 more creates a real limousine feel with individual second row reclining chairs. The ultimate expression of four-seat Bentayga motoring is represented by the fully specced W12 Mulliner version, which costs £232,000. As you expect for that kind of money, that particular variant comes with almost everything that it's possible to specify from the extensive options list. And we'll go into the various extras that you can add to this car in a minute. Before we get into all that though, you'll want to know what your other choices might be in the most exalted part of the large luxury SUV market. And the answer is that there are plenty of other options, but nothing else that's quite the same. Now the SUV model developed as a Rolls-Royce Cullinan is considerably more expensive, while the Porsche Cayenne that shares this Bentayga's MLB Evo platform can be had with much the same V8 diesel engine for half the price. But like the Audi SQ7 that also uses of that unit, it won't be considered exclusive enough by the average Bentley buyer. No, not even its top priciest Turbo S petrol form. And the same goes for the Range Rover, although in its top guises, you could easily pay Bentayga money for one of those. What else? Well, if you have around £135,000 to spend in this sector, you could have a Mercedes AMG G63, but that would handle like a tank. Or you could go for the top version of the all-electric Tesla Model X, which isn't much better in that regard and which can't approach this Bentley's opulence and build quality. A more interested likely Bentayga buyers though will, we think, be its cousin, the Lamborghini Urus, which in V8 twin turbo form is priced comparably with the W12 petrol version of this car, but focuses more on tarmac territory, so it's less of an all-rounder than this British built model. In short, you can see what we mean, which is why if you have the wherewithal and you like the unusual looks, we wouldn't be surprised if you were to come down in favour of the car with the winged B on its bonnet and sign up for a Bentayga. Having taken this step, you'll probably be, well, mildly interested to know just how generous Bentley has been with the standard specification, so you can establish just how much further box ticking is going to be required before a personalised version of this car can join uh, the other exclusive models that you'll doubtless already have residing in your oak timber frame garage. Well, let's see. The two main models, the diesel and the W12 petrol, both share the same basic spec. Now this gives you niceties like full LED headlamps with high beam assist, air suspension, exquisite Bentley designed leather powered heated seats, a panoramic sunroof, a powered tailgate and an electrically adjustable steering column. Plus, of course, there are all round parking sensors, there's climate control and auto headlamps and wipers. And as you'd expect, you get the usual twin front side and curtain airbags, plus the normal systems for traction and stability control, along with hill descent control too, and tyre pressure monitoring. 
Infotainment, well, that's taken care of by an eight inch center dash color infotainment touchscreen, uh, which connects you into a 10 speaker DAB stereo system and a 60 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, Bluetooth lets you hook up your smartphone and there's a 4G mobile Wi-Fi hotspot as standard, as well as two USB ports and a pair of SD card slots. Now the same monitor also runs the satellite navigation with 3D building view and you can use voice or gesture control to change some settings such as volume or to zoom in without having to put your finger on the screen. There are some trimming differences between the two main variants though, and it's worth knowing that the pricier petrol model offers you a wider range of available interior and exterior trimming options. Uh, now at a casual glance, the most obvious outside uh, visual differentiator between those two derivatives is the front grille mesh, which is colored in gloss black for the diesel or chrome for the W12 petrol model. Perhaps more significantly though, you get two things as standard on the Petra model that most buyers of this diesel will probably end up paying extra for. And, uh, it's an upgrade from 20 inch to 21 inch wheels and Bentley's dynamic ride control system that does so much to limit body roll through the corners and which costs nearly 4,000 pounds more if you go for the diesel variant. Uh, whatever your choice of engine, uh, you'll be offered the chance to specify the car with one of seven variations on Bentley's optional Mulliner driving specification pack. Now in each case, uh, there's a choice of wheel designs, plus you get dual style fuel and oil caps, drilled alloy foot pedals, embroidered Bentley logos in the seat leather, and diamond quilting for the seat bolsters, uh, the shoulder pads, and the door inserts. Having mentioned options, let's get into that a bit. So, where do we start? Uh, perhaps with the Sunshine Specification Pack that most customers go for, which serves up electrically operated rear blinds and twin visors for the driver and passenger that let you block both front and side sun glare at the same time. Also frequently added to this car is the luggage management kit that comes with a telescopic bar which runs in rails in the boot floor and allows you to secure loads in place no matter what size they are. Uh, Bentayga buyers who go for the activity specification pack which allows them to order this car in seven seat form get the sunshine specification features and also the luggage management kit included as part of that package and that's along with a hands-free tailgate which allows the rear hatch to be opened with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper. Another option pack that features the luggage management kit is the all-terrain specification pack. And you'll need that in the unlikely event that you'll regularly be venturing off the beaten track in this Bentley. Now this gives you underfloor protection and a top view camera, which will provide an overhead image of the car. And that's helpful for driving and maneuvering in tight spaces. Now the key all-terrain specification pack inclusion though is the brand's drive dynamics control system with its responsive off-road settings and that allows you to choose the right mode for the terrain you're on. How relevant is all that going to be for a typical Bentayga buyer though? Well, not very. For such a person, it'll make far more sense to specify two more road-orientated specification packs. Uh, they're badged City and Touring, uh, both of which include camera-driven safety features, many of which, to be frank, we would have expected uh, would be fitted as standard on a car of this price. Um, take autonomous braking. That's one of those setups that, as you drive, scans the road ahead in search of potential accident hazards, uh, warning you if one's detected, and if necessary, braking the car to avoid a collision. Now we were a, a bit shocked to find that Bentley's system, uh, Bentley Safeguard Plus, isn't standard regardless of spec on all versions of this car. But you do get it as one of six features in the Touring specification pack that most customers do choose, along with five other inclusions, uh, a head-up display, lane assist, which steers you back into your lane should you be drifting from it, um, adaptive cruise control, which uh, automatically keeps you a safe distance from the car in front on the highway and which can work with predictive data from the uh, navigation system. Night vision which gives you enhanced forward vision after dark and traffic assist which can uh, basically drive the car for you in low speed congestion controlling steering, throttle and brakes. 
Almost all Bentayga buyers also tick the further box for the City specification pack, which includes five further features. City Safeguard, the first of those, is basically another autonomous braking system, but this one particularly focuses on identifying pedestrians at uh, lower urban speeds and can, if necessary, automatically brake the car to avoid them. Uh, reverse Traffic Warning will alert you to oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a space. Traffic Sign Recognition pictures road signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. Uh, park Assist will help you to identify parking spaces and steer you into them. And that's also helped by the top view camera system that we mentioned previously. If you can't be bothered to wade through all those options and you just want the most opulent Bentayga you can get, then your dealer will walk you over to the very exclusive Mulliner model, which can only be ordered with the W12 petrol engine. This comes complete with all the extras and all the packs we just mentioned. Uh, so the Mulliner driving specification, uh, the sunshine specification, the all-terrain specification, the touring specification, and the city specification. Tick, 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 tick. And Mulliner models also come with bigger 22-inch wheels and body-coloured lower bodywork, which normally costs extra and only in a four seat configuration. So there are just uh, two chairs in the back and that leaves room for a special center console drinks cooler. Uh, other exclusive touches on this top variant include bespoke door sill tread plates, um, a heated steering wheel, and for the dash, an ombre burr walnut fade veneer finish that transitions from piano black to clear stained wood. Uh, the leather seats are special too with contrast accent colouring and duo colour contrast stitching. So we've covered the main models in the range and the key elements of standard and optional Bentayga equipment. But of course, it's possible to go a lot further than that. For a start, you're probably going to want to upgrade your car's audio system. Most Bentayga owners do, uh, possibly with a 12-speaker, 700-watt Bentley signature audio setup, but ideally with the 18-speaker, 1950-watt name for Bentley premium package we've been trying here. And that's an extra which will set you back over £6,600. Is any setup worth that? Well, all we can say is we've never tried a better in-car audio system. Another infotainment option we have in this case is the Bentley Rear Entertainment Pack, which comes with a pair of 10.2 inch color touchscreen tablets. Now they can be left in their docks on the backs of the front seats or lifted off to watch video, to browse the internet, or to synchronize with the in-car media. Now here, that setup has been further embellished with a TV tuner. Other extras fitted to this particular car include veneered picnic tables for backseat folk, a special comfort headrest for the rear outer seats, and a valet key which lets others drive your car without giving them access to the glove box or the boot. Uh, this car also has the glazing specification, which gives you thickened exterior glass for extra refinement. Uh, should you want to go further in that regard, you'll also be interested in the privacy glazing option that, as well as tinting for the rear windows, also gives you a heated acoustic windscreen. Now, if this were our car, we might also have gone for the event specification pack, and that gives you a rear event seat, which slides out from the boot floor, and that's ideal for sitting on while you're putting on your wellies or having a picnic. And tailgate downlighters too, which cast a bright glow under the rear of the car as you access the boot. Uh, to help you avoid treading in puddles, Bentley offers LED welcome lamps by Mulliner that beam down from the door handles. Also tempting would be the parking heater with radio remote control option, which lets you set in advance the ideal interior temperature before you get into the car. Bentley's also keen to point out that the Bentayga is available with the widest range of lifestyle accessories ever offered by the brand. So, for example, those with an interest in water sports can specify a load assist tray and wet gear stowage options for the boot. Uh, your dealer can talk you through various bespoke lifestyle orientated packages and, of course, you can add roof rails and an electrically retractable tow bar but not, unfortunately, a full-size spare wheel. Now that does seem a major oversight on a supposedly very capable SUV. Older folk may be more interested in the Mulliner hamper set, which comes complete with a refrigerator, bespoke fine Linley china crockery, cutlery and crystal glass, and a storage area for dry goods. 
For comfort in the great outdoors, sections of that hamper can be removed and used as seats. Finally, we need to go through the steps you can take to make the exterior and interior of this car very much your own. Now, so many are the aesthetic options that it's very unlikely that two Bentaygas will ever end up leaving the factory in exactly the same spec. Uh, let's start with the paintwork and your initial choice between no fewer than 90 different single shade exterior colors. There are also 24 further duotone blends that mix one hue for the bonnet and roof with another one for the rest of the body. Now, if you can't find something from that lot to satisfy your taste, then Bentley will spray your car in any color you want through its bespoke specification service. All of that makes the decision between 13 alloy wheel designs seem positively simple, but that's far from the end of choice for the exterior. For a bit more glitz, this diesel model can be treated to a bright chromed matrix style trimming for the front grille and the lower bumper apertures. Uh, should you want the outside of your Bentayga to have a more sporting feel, black line specification replaces the outside bright work with black painted surfaces for the window surrounds, uh, the wing vents, the lamp bezels, the lower doors and handles, uh, the back bumper, the grille mesh and the rear number plate support. Or you could go the whole hog and get the optional black specification pack, which gives you big 22 inch five spoke alloy wheels, gloss black exhaust tailpipes and a dynamic carbon fiber finish for the front splitter, the side sills, the rear diffuser and the spoiler. As for how you can make the cabin of your Bentayga your own, well again, there are a world of choices available to you. Uh, in addition to the 15 main colors you can decide between for the cabin's leather, you can also choose a secondary hide to complement or contrast with the other. Uh, as you'd expect, contrast stitching can be specified for the leather in a choice of colors. Uh, there are 15 luxurious carpet options and you can embellish those either with deep pile over mats in 100% wool or even thicker lamb's wool rug carpet mats for the front and rear cabins. Uh, once you've done with that, you'll need to make your selection between uh, the seven different fascia veneer options. We have uh, the liquid amber one here and there's a chance to add in a mood lighting system and that can bathe the cabin in one of six different soothing colors. Uh, there are also a range of alternative steering wheel options. Uh, we have the uh, duotone three-spoke design here. You can even have a work of art in your Bentayga. No, not a painting, but the next best thing. Artists at Mulliner have produced a piece of mountain marquetry veneer that decorates the passenger side of the dash and uses 32 layers of different veneered woods from six species of tree to depict the rogue Bentayga in Gran Canaria, the mountain range that apparently inspired this car's name. It's a work of art that you'll want to drive off with and certainly a unique cabin feature but not quite as unique as the ultimate addition that you could add to this Bentley's interior, the Mulliner Tourbillon by Breitling Clock. Now this jewel-like timepiece can be had with light or dark mother of pearl finishes. It's machined from solid gold. It's decorated with eight diamond indexes and it sits on top of the center console between the two air vents. And the cost of this extra, a cool 105,000 pounds. Now you're probably going to start spluttering into your tea if we start to describe the Bentayga as economic or efficient, but Bentley isn't frightened to. Uh, the company will tell you at length how its use of lightweight aluminium has shaved 236 kilos off the weight of this car uh, and how the latest version of the W12 petrol engine is 10.4% more efficient than the previous one and how it shuts down half its cylinders on part throttle loads and how the diesel version is so economic that you can drive from uh, Chelsea to Geneva or the Scottish Highlands on a single tankful. Which all sounds good, until of course you drill down into the detail and spoil the rhetoric with the facts. 
a chunky slab sided super luxury large SUV like this one is never going to be either efficient or economic however much Bentley might want it to be so uh, the much more achievable second prize is for it to be at least on a par with obvious segment rivals which to some extent the brand has managed the W12 petrol models fuel and CO2 figures 21.6 mpg on the combined cycle and 296 grams per kilometer of CO2 may be pretty awful but they're no worse than you'll get with a comparable 5 litre supercharged Range Rover but that's not saying much is it with the 4 litre V8 you're looking at 24.8 mpg on the combined cycle and 260 grams per kilometer of CO2 all of which matters not one jot because in the unlikely event that you were buying a Bentayga and you actually cared about any of that stuff uh, then you'd be going for the version we're trying here the 4 litre diesel now the stats here are still aren't anything to write home about but they're pretty revolutionary for a Bentley 210 grams per kilometer of CO2 and 35.8 mpg that's a fraction better than is the case with a comparable Range Rover SDV8 now we've regularly achieved over 30 miles per gallon in this test so we can readily believe the brands claim that the 85 litre fuel tank would separate uh, by spans of over 600 miles the times at which you'd have to stop and sell your shoes at the smelly petrol station forecourt. In crew, they will contend that merely quoting fuel and CO2 figures doesn't tell the whole story, and there is some truth in that. The dirtiest new diesel cars, it was suggested in the media recently, aren't luxury Leviathans like this one, but uh, small, cheap diesel super minis that lack the sophisticated emission control systems that are found on the luxury black pump models. Uh, the Bentayga certainly has plenty of those, including selective catalytic reduction, which uses an additive called AdBlue, that turns uh, harmful nitrogen oxides into harmless nitrogen and oxygen, uh, an exhaust gas recirculation system with a cooler for maximum NOx reduction, and a special bypass valve for rapid engine warm up. Plus, of course, there's the usual stop and start setup to cut the ignition when you're waiting in traffic or stuck at the lights. And like most modern auto gearboxes, this one has a coasting mode that at highway speeds uh, disconnects the engine from the transmission to save fuel. Uh, the drag coefficient is a great deal more slippery than you might think it to be too. It's rated at an impressive 0.24 CD. As ever though, there's more to running costs and emissions and fuel figures. For a start, there's road tax. Now you're going to be pitched right up into band M, which means that buyers of the W12 model will need to make a £1,100 payment in year one of ownership and shell out £505 per year thereafter. On a car this expensive though, the really big ticket item is always going to be depreciation. Experts cap don't think that the three year residuals on a Bentayga will be great, but they do agree with the rest of the industry uh, that they will certainly outstrip those of a top end Range Rover and maybe by as much as 10 to 15%. Now you will damage that hugely though by loading the car up with pricey extras. Uh, there'll be no getting out of pricey insurance premiums though. All versions of this Bentley are rated at Group 50. And servicing, that's not going to be cheap either. Uh, the intervals for both engines come round every 10,000 miles or every 12 months, depending on which arrives soonest. Uh, a two-year prepaid servicing package is available for around about £2,000. This is all backed up by a three-year unlimited mileage warranty, which is pretty much par for the course in the luxury sector. Uh, the Range Rover has a similar cover, although Rolls-Royce uh, offers four years on its new cars. Bentayga buyers also get a roadside assistance package that in the well, very unlikely event of a breakdown uh, will get you going or take your Bentley on to an approved repairer. Now if it can't be fixed quickly you'll be provided with a car to carry on your journey or even a hotel to stay in while the car is being sorted. There are two ways of looking at this car. Either you share the view of the CEO of Rolls-Royce, who dismisses it disparagingly as a camouflaged Q7, or as we do, you consider what Bentley has set out to achieve here and you marvel at just how many of their objectives have been realized. There's most of the off-road prowess of a Range Rover, most of the on-tarmac drive dynamics of a Porsche Cayenne Turbo, 
and the gentleman's club style interior exclusivity of a Bentley Malzahn. You can tow three and a half tons, you can use it as a boardroom limousine, and on Continental Autobahns on your weekends off, you can drive it up to 187 miles an hour if you're in the W12 version. Name us another car at any price that can do all that. Which does make it a touch disappointing that in some respects, Bentley's made this SUV a little bit difficult to love. And if you're not put off by the price, you might be by the styling or possibly even by the name. Practicality in the boot area should and could be a lot better too. Uh, you might think it's also credible to argue that a top Range Rover provides nearly as much capability for an awful lot less, but actually we would question that. For a start, a top Range Rover wouldn't cost an awful lot less, it doesn't handle as well on tarmac, and it has nothing like the top tier interior elegance of a Bentayga. In summary, you can see why it took the Bentley brand so long to get around to bringing us this car, but having tried it, we've ended up being very glad they did. Of course, there will always be people who will sneer at the concept behind this kind of super luxury SUV. As one writer put it, never again need you be stuck up a creek without a China dinner service. Still, if you can get over your prejudices and appreciate this model for what it's managed to achieve, there's lots to like here. Contrary to what some people might tell you, it's very much its own car, very much unique. And best of all, it's very much a Bentley, which if you'd like one, will be exactly what you want to hear. <laughs>